Good evening, everyone. So today we are here to witness a workshop on creative writing, and this is a workshop of its first kind hosted by Public Nama. So firstly, before starting with the workshop, I would like to address something about Public Nama. The unarchived struggle saga of the Himalayan human is seldom reflected in the mainstream media, literature, or arts. Their struggles, their dreams, their aspirations have been mostly marginalized by the power politics that treats the elder offspring of the Himalaya as meager others. Public Nama, a multidisciplinary and multi-genre e-journal is a creative caravan of archiving such creative hitherto untold tales, untouched stories of the other Himalayas. That mainly includes the geopolitical expanse of Darjeeling, Bhutan, Sikkim, and including the Seven Sisters. It tries to preserve the psychological history of the Himalaya that's impossible to be comprehended through photographs, documentaries, and any other media. The, U uh, the URL for our e-journal is www.publicnama.com. Kindly keep up following the e-journal. Your invaluable comments, suggestions, and observations is heartily welcome. Public Norma intends to grow as an imaginative platform for excavation, self-analysis, introspection of the marginalized society. It strives to be a logical mirror of the constructive journey of Himalayan mankind that lives in the parallel civilization. Attributed to eco-friendly, sustainable heritage of art, life, language, folklore, and technology, etc. Public Nama started an extensive series of online talks called the Public Nama Talk on diverse topics from 6th June in order to boost the mental and intellectual health of its readers when the entire world was under the fire of COVID-19. So somewhat around like 111 experts and speakers from around India, Nepal, and Bangladesh, belonging to multiple arenas, shared their thoughts. Now, we are going to start a series of online live workshops on various fields. We are presenting a workshop on creative writing today. We would like to foster the creative culture through such crispy but enriched workshops for the organic development of marginalized populace. The workshop series aims at nurturing the local talents who have potential enough to reach out the international level. We would be hosting workshop on diverse fields in near future like filmmaking, photography, art, painting, sculpture, music, public speaking, craftsmanship, law, poetry recitation, etc. So we warmly welcome the two prestigious world-renowned personalities in this August virtual gathering today. Team Public Norma feels proud to have Professor Surly Zen from South Africa and Dr. Sarita Sharma from Tejpur, Assam, India, in our workshop today. So I would heartily welcome uh, ma'am, Professor Shirley Zeng, and Dr. Creative Writing Workshop today. Uh, I would start with a brief introduction uh, of Professor Shirley Zeng first. And uh, ma'am, you can continue or you can carry on with your session for today's workshop. So begin to begin with uh, Shirley Zen's introduction. Professor Shirley Zen is a former group head of human resources at 
Woolworths Holdings Limited. Prior to this, she was the head of human resources at Standard Bank South Africa and deputy global head of human resources for Standard Bank Group. She also registered her own company, Shirley Zinn Consulting, that provides consulting advisory services in transformation, leadership, and education. Prior to this, she was the group executive HR at NetBank. Before this, she was the general manager of human resources at South Africa's revenue service. She was an ordinary professor at University of Pretoria, Faculty of Economics and Management Sciences. She has been appointed as adjunct professor at University of Cape Town. She is the past president of Institute for People Management, South Africa, and registered as master HR professional with South Africa Board of People Practice. She hails from Cape Town's flat in Cape Town and started her career as a secondary school teacher of English, then moved to the University of West Cape, where she lectured in teacher education. After this, she served at South Li Southern Life as training manager and then moved to Department of Public Service and Administrations, South African Management Development Institute in Pretoria as the director. She held the position of executive employment equity at Computer Configuration Holdings. Before her appointment as SARS, she filled the role of regional human resource director for Middle East and Africa for Ricketts Barrister of Global FMCG Company listed in London's Stock Exchange. Okay. Am I heard? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Am I audible? Yes. Can you hear you? Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Should I start, Pinot? Thank you very much, Bernard, for that um, wonderful introduction. And thank you for having me on your uh, your platform of uh, Public Nama. And I'm very excited today to share some of my thoughts on creative thinking. Um, I wrote a book called um, Swimming Upstream. And, um, and having taught English um, for many years, I have a, a lot of respect for the importance and the essential um, um, life skill of creative writing. And I'm, I'm excited to be here today, sharing the platform with Dr. Sarita. Um, it's a true honor. And I think for us in South Africa, it's also very important for the South Africans um, on the call. Um, we um, also have had a legacy of apartheid in this country. And just um, like you were describing now, Binot, about marginalized uh, uh, people, um, who have untouched skills and untold stories. In South Africa, um, you, we have the, a similar situation of a large ma a majority of people who have been marginalized in this country. And, um, and today I, I hope to inspire them and inspire um, your people um, who have been marginalized in, in your region um, to foster a creative culture and, um, and, and, and pursue organic development for marginalized talent who have potential to play on the international platform. I too come from a marginalized environment. Um, the Cape Flats, as you were reading, Benot, is uh, one of those um, apartheid spatial um, uh, regional arrangements that uh, boxed people um, who were from different um, uh, racial groups and prevented them from engaging on various uh, platforms and, and and acquiring the skills and having their talent and their and their skills recognized and so today I'm, I'm very excited to be here so um so let's talk about for a few minutes um why creative writing is essential um and um i have to say that um um as we sit here today we know we have numerous problems with uh, literacy 
and with uh, with numeracy across many many countries. And um, I want to say today that writing is an essential life skill and an essential professional skill. It is almost impossible to navigate your way through life um, without this skill. Writing is a is a primary set of skills, um, and it is it is almost everything you do is based on on uh, on learning and um, and and your ability to understand intellectually what. Uh, writing uh, means um, and one's work, one's whole life depends on the, the ability to read. So it's a very, very important skill to learn from a very early age. And unfortunately, often our schools and our learning environments are not succeeding very well in this space. Um, writing helps us with communication and it helps us to think more clearly and the ability to think and to translate that into writing that someone can read and understand, um, it is a, a, it is so key. It preserves our ideas, it preserves our heritage, it tells our history, it tells our stories, our thoughts, our memories are captured in, in creative writing. It expresses who we are, it resolves many problems, it is therapeutic and healing. And even as I think about the book that I've written called Swimming Upstream, um, for me, writing that book was not easy, um, but it was a healing process. It was therapeutic and I could potentially um, inspire, especially young people, to ensure that they become, um, the, they unleash that, uh, that talent that often goes un, uh, you know goes just uh, lost um, uh, in them that everybody has amazing talent and magic within them and that we need to be enabling them to unleash that beautiful talent that they have and one of the ways that this can happen is through the telling of of stories our stories influence not only ourselves um, and our hearts and our souls but also influences others and influences our communities and our society and everyone um, has a story so um, I was doing some research and the Washington Post recently said that if you think that creative writing is a frivolous waste of time you are just plain wrong quote unquote creative writing helps to develop creative thoughts helps to get our imagination it's a platform for our imagination um, to thrive and it is, it's it's a fun thing to do as well. So it's not people always think it's a, a very serious exercise. Yes, there are disciplines involved, and we need to focus and reflect on what we are trying to say. But there's also a fun element to uh, to it as well. And we will try and demonstrate that in the exercise that we will do a little bit later on. So um, it broadens our ability to, to problem solve and our world is volatile it's uncertain it's complex it's ambiguous it's disruptive our world is full of stress and challenges uh, today and full of inequalities especially during this COVID we have seen inequalities in this world become even bigger and um, and we we need to give people a platform whereby they can express how they feel about the world and um, and and also try to see whether they can actually try and solve some of these problems through telling these stories. Now, I believe that creative writing needs to start at a very, very early age because it allows and enables children to show their opinions and develop their voice, develop their voice. And we know, especially in marginalized, disadvantaged communities, we do not have a voice. Our voices have been have been taken from us um, by those who seek uh, to oppress us. And so writing enables us to find our voices and to voice an opinion and to have a position. It also improves our ability to think creatively and using our logic and ability um, um, to be, to, 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 to um, analyze and to come up with recommendations as to how we can add value to this world. And this world needs to needs to think about what its future is. And stories help us to understand our history. It helps us to preserve our history, but it also helps us to chart a better future, a better life 
for all. And a lot of us are sitting there with amazing talent. I had um, a beautiful engagement earlier today with somebody who had seen the post on Facebook and said, I would like to join, but I can't, and I hope I will be able um, to record a uh, year, year recording of this uh, this conversation because I am I'm wanting to be part of a creative writing um, 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 session like this so that perhaps I can step up to this too. And, and I want to encourage all of you to say that regardless of whether you come from uh, a disadvantaged environment, you have amazing talent and don't let anybody make you feel inadequate or unable um, to, to be able to write. And we're gonna take you through some of the steps of how it is possible um, for you to become and excel as a writer as well. Um, I think that um, there are various uh, types of writing um, and your imagination starts to flow when you engage in creative writing. The majority of writing, the books that we read um, by far is creative. With it, we can pretend um, anything you want and help a potential reader to think out of the box to think differently um, and to um, and, and so there are different categories. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Maybe Dr. Sarita will talk more also about this a bit later on. But there are there are epic journeys and stories that we have been on. There are novels, there are poems and, and beautiful poetry, um, a lot of which has not been told, um, has not um, emerged in this world. And we need to go and find those, the, those novels and poems and short stories and songs. And now we have television uh, uh, scripts and, and screenplays um, as technology has come to the fore. Um, but the true definition of what creative writing is in its simplest form is really about original writing that expresses ideas and thoughts in an imaginative way. It's your personal pen to paper. And there's something very powerful about being able to put pen to paper. Okay, these days you can use your phone or your laptop because technology has helped us. But there's nothing more beautiful than trying to write um, some thoughts down um, and, and give expression to uh, what you are feeling at that particular point in time. And um, a lot of us do journaling, a lot of us, and, and that is very, very important because it also helps us to put out what we are feeling about what is going on around us, whether it be in the political environment, whether it be in an economic environment or social or community environment, or even our families, or even our own personal feelings. These are all important elements of creative writing. And that um, creative writing is, is, is to, it, it gives us purpose. It gives us a platform in order to tell our stories and to deal with the emotional impact that comes with poetry writing, short story, novel writing, and more. Um, and, um, and of course, research and, 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 and academic writing is a little bit different, but we, we're not going to touch too much on that today because I want to focus on just the very simple basics of what writing, creative writing is, is really um, all, all about. Creative writing also uses all of our senses and emotions, and we want to create a strong experience for our reader um, and, um, and intrigue them um, with our characters, with our visualization of our of, of where we are located, of what we are looking at, of what we are feeling in a particular moment. Um, it's the art of, 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 of imagination, of, of making things up, of putting a creative splash um, on history. Um, in, um, and it makes you step out of your reality into a new realm that is inspirational. Um, and I really want to encourage people to use this part of their minds as well, because we are bombarded by so many things these days, and it's difficult to sift the good and the bad, the ethical and the uh, the oppressed and the oppressor. Um, and we need to be able to to understand what all of these things mean and how we adjust to this. So I want to talk about children and the ability to learn new words, vocabulary, because these are the building blocks of being able to write. Um, we need to help children and we need to read to children. We need to write books 
that um, you know we can sit with our children and and read to them so that we can excite them about the ability to to write and to read um, and so it starts with words and with pictures and then we can build little sentences and simple sentences become more complex sentences as we become more sophisticated and experiences help to develop a creative and curious mind and i remember my students when i was teaching english and um we were to teach everything from you know shakespeare to chaucer to creative writing to grammar to spelling um and um, and sometimes it was very laborious in the way it was taught and, and, and students didn't enjoy it. But when you tell students that there's a story about, about love and there's a story about um, um, family and there's a story about the beauty of nature and there's a story about analyzing who we are and what our purpose is in life um, and that they need to think about it a little bit. Um, I think that they get a lot more excited and they feel more encouraged and many benefits um, come from um, come from that because many of us have been silenced and we often are not enabled to speak out and share um, what we are feeling. Um, and the advantages of a creative writing, I've also been asked to just talk briefly about that. Um, uh, there's a professor, Gail Tompkins, who talks about um, let no child be left behind and um, talks about the influence of, of, of literature on, on, on children and why children should spend more time writing creatively in the classroom. Um, we spend so much time assessing students on, you know, ticking boxes, but we never get them to do this, this creative and imaginative thinking. And if children understand that this fosters artistic expression, um, um, and stimulates one's imagination and gets us to think more clearly um, and we can exude our identity and our stories and our folklore and um and 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 you know our communities and our art and and our achievements um in those communities we can tell our stories and have them published and um it, is, it will excite them to read and write as well and to make their contribution. And when we empower our students um, to create something that is theirs, it's something very, very special because a lot of us don't have much. And at least if you've written something, it's your writing. You can look at it a, a year or two later and you can say, these were my thoughts and this is how it's evolved. Um, and it can transform attitudes towards learning, towards going to school um, and keep a spark going within their soul keep a spark to continue to learn, to continue to read, begin to love reading because reading and writing goes together and perhaps take that step and try uh, to write um, themselves, um, um, to write uh, whether it is poetry or, or whether it is some creation or novel story. Um, it is a thing of beauty. It is a, it is a thing to be celebrated. Um, and I think in an age that we live, uh, with uh, you know technology and digitization in an age of emojis um, helping children to write helps them to communicate more effectively with cell phones and tablets we are being handed you know this is being handed to uh, children at a much younger age and we can now see that they might lose their ability to communicate efficiently as they get older and we need to encourage them to actually just if you, you just give me a pen and a paper, um, I think uh, somebody once said, we can be able to capture um, our, our stories and our history and perhaps capture our future. So in the age of social media and instant messaging, our vocabulary is constantly changing. Um, sometimes I think, I think for the worst, um, um, because we try to say things in the shortest possible way, and maybe there's a place for that. Um, but I believe that emoji language is becoming the fastest growing language in the world now. And if children are growing up in an environment where the use of emojis is more common than the use of proper vocabulary, words, sentences, grammar, the effects could be really damaging for world communication because we will, we will lose the richness 
and the essence of who we are and what we are about. Um, and just a point about writing improves our reading ability too. Writing and reading goes hand in hand. Um, and we, we need to ensure that we combine reading and writing instruction by having students write about what they read, te explicitly teaching them the skills of how to create text and how to improve the amount of writing that they do and reading comprehension, as well as improve writing skills. Luckily, writing regularly um, helps to improve our communication skills in any case. And if children can find time to write on a regular basis, we can eliminate the fear of them losing the ability to communicate effectively. Um, and another very real benefit of creating uh, creative writing in classrooms is that it can help develop a sense of community amongst our students. In a bitterly polarized society, any activity that fosters empathy and collaboration is well worth our time. And I want to say it again, in a society that has been polarized, any activity that fosters empathy, kindness, generosity, and collaboration is well worth our time. So, sense of words and sentence structure and vocabulary and punctuation are some of the building blocks uh, of, of creative writing. And um, when a child begins to write their ideas down, completing the story develops a range of important skills in, in lifelong skills um, in, in children um, because they, all these skills. Um, um, uh, will be harnessed for when they have to go and find a job. Um, employers look to see um, um, at all of those capabilities um, and, and people's ability to process through complexity and solving difficult uh, uh, problems and being able to, to write uh, reports and, and, and think about how they will apply the new learnings that they might have had. It also strengthens, strengthens self-confidence when you have been able to write um, something. So it's a very powerful aspect of being human is the ability to be able to write and communicate your points of view and thoughts and feelings clearly. And it has an incredibly positive impact on our children um, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in their education. Um, then in terms of the basic, what is the basic knowledge requirements for creative writing? What are the key skills that we, you know, that goes that we need to know for, for being able to write. One of the most important basic writing is the ability to read and comprehend and understand the text, right? Um, to write, children first need to be able to, to sound out the unfamiliar words, to recognize many other words. They need to understand the, the meaning of strings of words in sentences and in paragraphs. Um, and then they need to understand the whole story in an integrated, holistic way. They need a good vocabulary in order to do this. And vocabulary, um, you learn um, mostly um, um, through reading. And that is why those of us who, who write well, who write, um, need to be able to continue to write so that there are this wonderful content that um, young people uh, can learn. Um, um, some children do struggle with spelling, but it's something that we, we can work on. Um, and, you know, then there's the editorial capabilities, and then there's the writer's block that we sometimes have. There are lots of barriers to writing. Even I had that, and it's a, a deeply emotional element, and we will quickly look at, you know, how we can unblock um, um, writer's block for some of us who might have that. Um, so I spoke about words, I spoke about uh, sentences um, and how we construct sentences um, and using uh, sentence structures that are clear and meaningful to the reader and grammar, for example, tenses, um, shorter or longer sentences um, and stringing ideas together in a sequential and orderly manner is very important. Also punctuation is important, some of us forget that, you know, using commas, using full stops, using apostrophes, exclamation marks, uh, mean something, um, you know, when you are writing. So, you, so and, and capital letters are also important. And in all this WhatsApping that we do, sometimes we, 
we also you know drop the standard in our writing because we want to do it quickly but these uh, the rules and the disciplines around writing is very important and then of course we must know what we are writing about we must have content knowledge we must um, have knowledge of the subject that we that we are talking about and um, we're going to take a very simple little subject later on and 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 encourage you to write whatever comes into your mind um, on that particular topic. And then, of course, they, once you've written, you've written your first draft. Um, it will consist of words and sentences and paragraphs. And then um, you need to be able to um, revise and edit, look for the errors, look for the mistakes, edit your work yourself, ask others to, 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 to help you to edit. Um, and um, it's wonderful to work with your peers and share some ideas, or you write a paragraph, they write a paragraph, and you can, can be, begin to play in, have interplay um, around that. So, so the stages of writing really is firstly to have some ideas about what it is you want to write about. What is the purpose? What is the objective? Then pre-writing, so getting some of your ideas down on paper, creating a draft that flows really nicely then reviewing and revising. It's a constant effort of trying to improve on what you are doing. And then editing and proofreading um, your, your draft document before you print it and publish it and submit your final document if you are going to uh, be submitting a short story or a poem or a, you know, or a, 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 a novel um, that you have written. And the barriers can be overcome. So I don't want you to be overwhelmed by the fact that Oh no, I'm not a writer. I'm not capable of doing this. You can, you can do this, um, and it is instinctive actually to be able um, to, to 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 tell a story and write it. You can even brainstorm with others if you become blocked. Um, you can work with a, a good friend or a professor or a teacher that can cultivate some creative writing ideas with you, and um, and this is how you can be, you can overcome barriers that interfere with uh, your being an author. There's also a thing called mind mapping where you draw little bubbles and put little words and, and, and put you know, all the pieces out which are components of what you want to write about. And you can do your research and you can and, and come up with that. So mind mapping is another way of, of removing blockages. But then there's also emotional blockages, you know, where you're writing about something very personal and painful and it can be quite difficult to get beyond that. But that is all part of the healing as well. And, and sometimes it is important to put those, those feelings down. So in conclusion, um, you know, I would like to say paper, pen, laptop, phone are all tools that can help you to get started. Your brain is often faster than your hands. So make sure that you're capturing it as, as quickly as you possibly can. Um, and re reflect and think about what you, what you have written. Give expression to what's in your heart, what's in your soul, what's in your mind. Write down what you are thinking, what the impact is of what you are writing. Um, write what you see, write what you hear, write what you smell. Write how it made you feel, how it appealed to your senses. Um, and understand why writing matters to you. It's very important um, to understand why writing is important um, to you. Don't criticize yourself too much because I think Part of a barrier is that we've have, we've been very critical of ourselves. We're afraid that you know people might not like what we read, or people um, um, you know might find some fault with it. But I think it takes courage to put your ideas out there. So don't be too hard on yourself. Enjoy the practical exercise that we will do a little bit later. And I want to thank you very much for listening so attentively. Thank you very much, Binat, and over to Dr. Sarita.
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so we just have an August session from Professor uh, Sir Lizin, uh, who just mentioned us about uh, uh, three basic points, that is uh, why creative writing, so why is creative writing so important? The second was the advantages of creative writing. And the third was the basic knowledge requirements for creative writing. And besides this, he also mentioned us about a certain uh, technical aspects regarding uh, creative writing and the final outcome that is uh, uh, something to do with the publication uh, sections as well. So uh, very, very thank you, ma'am. So we are uh, very much uh, thankful towards uh, you. So I guess your uh, noble talk here has been fruitful to the viewers and the participants here. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so after this session now, uh, we have an another resource person for today's creative writing. So that is uh, Dr. Sarita Sarma. She is from Tejpur, Assam. So Dr. Sarita Sarma is an academician, author, poet, translator, motivational speaker, and mental health counselor. She is passionately involved with women's issues and works for the cause of gender equality. She is the board member of Transdisciplinary Agora for Future Discussions, Georgia. She is also the coordinator, editor in chief at the TAFFD's magazine, USA. She is also the member of Transhumanist Party, USA. She has nine books to her credit in diverse range of genres. She moves around conducting workshops in creative writing. She lectures extensively on body image, life skills, and corporate training. She is also an academician and has published various Inter uh, and has published her uh, research articles in various international journals. She has presented and chaired as a resource person in various summits and conferences. She has been actively mentoring students of various universities from many countries. She has earned many international accolades and awards to name few like Philosophicua and Grand Productions Literary Award from Canada. TAFFD's perform, uh, perf uh, Performer Award, ANESAS Literary Award, ANESAS Merit Award, Seva Sadma Merit Award, etc. She believes in a world of equality where man-made barriers of caste, greed, gender colors do not exist. She believes in freedom from equality and strives each walking and waking hour for it. So now we have a session from such prestigious Dr. Sarita Sharma who would be speaking on basic skill requirements for creative writing, types of creative writing, and steps in creative writing. So now we have a session from our another resource person, Dr. Sarita Sharma from Assam. Thank you so much, uh, Binod. So, Hello, everyone. You may speak now. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Nama for having initiated uh, this uh, discussion, this interactive show, because uh, these kinds of workshops are so, so important for all of us, uh, not just for beginners, but for every one of us, uh, because I think every writer, every artist or uh, human being for that matter, regardless of uh, where we stand in our uh, personal and professional capacity, need that one person who can encourage us, inspire us, uh, propel us to give our best uh, 
and some more. Uh, talk to us openly, honestly, uh, give us feedback. Someone who we can talk to openly and uh, someone who we can look up to. Uh, so I think uh, we all need that uh, mentor in our lives. And uh, this is what we are doing today. We are not teaching anything. We are not, uh, you are not learning anything from us. But I think what we are doing is that we are disseminating knowledge. Because knowledge, uh, if knowledge becomes static, uh, then it becomes irrelevant and redundant for every one of us. So knowledge is something which should keep growing. And there's no person in this world who can say that, okay, fine, I've arrived. I don't need to know anymore. I don't need to talk anymore to anyone. I don't need anything from anyone. I think, I, I think uh, that would be a fallacy. Uh, so uh, these kinds of uh, interactive workshops where uh, we also learn so much from each other and uh, you also maybe get to know something from us is very, very important. So Public Nama needs to be applauded for this. And uh, uh, I call myself a writer, yes, uh, with great audacity, I do that. But as I was sitting here listening to Professor Shirley Zinn, I, uh, I am so enriched uh, by her experiences, her visions as a writer, her take on creativity, what she has to say uh, to upcoming writers or even established writers on how to come out of blocks and so many things. Uh, so when I listen to her, I learn as much as you are doing, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, what I feel is that uh, it's so important to keep learning, unlearn uh, some of what we have learned and relearn. So unless and until we keep that uh, open, unless we until uh, unless and until we keep the, our minds open to learn, uh, unlearn and relearn, I think our knowledge becomes static, which as I said earlier, becomes redundant. So, uh, but of course, yes, the, 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 the virtual has its own limitations. Uh, but I would any day want to have a face-to-face -face conversation with everyone there. I would like to see your faces as I talk, uh, but, uh, but hey, we are uh, not complaining because I think the uh, virtual has opened up new vistas of communications like never before. And I think we are interacting with one another like never before. Uh, earlier, maybe we did not interact on this scale uh, uh, which we are doing now because of the virtual. So, uh, so we have to make do with whatever we have. And uh, yes, this kind of interactions should happen some more. Uh, so I would like to thank Professor Shirley Zinn also for having uh, taken out the time somewhere or seed uh, 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 germinated into uh, this, uh, something this uh, beautiful and interactive. So yes, having said that, I think I'll move on to uh, the, the topic in hand. I, I keep forgetting, so I have jotted down some points. I'll have to look at it from time to time. I have a, a treacherous memory. Okay, so first of all, I'm required to talk about basic skill requirement for uh, writing. Okay, so the two uh, there are two important skills which I personally have also observed and which I, as an instructor of creative writing over the years, have seen, uh, which are very, very essential and very, very basic to a creative writing. The first is that you need to have imagination. Unless and until you have imagination, uh, what will you talk about? What will you write about? So you need to have a very uh, rich, diverse, fertile and flowing imagination. You need to be able to see things differently. When you look up at the clouds, uh, you need to be able to see different formations there. You may see a rabbit, you may see a lion, or you may see a river floating in the sky, but your imagination has to be there. And I think this is where we come to the basic question of whether creative uh, writing can be taught as a skill, whether it is something which we inherit as a gene from uh, our parents and forefathers. Uh, so I think we also, uh, in this uh, process, we also answer that question that, yes, imagination may not uh, may be difficult to taught. I will not say uh, it's impossible to taught, uh, to be taught, but yes, uh, it is difficult to, uh, to teach imagination. I cannot force you to imagine things. The imagination has to be your own. You have to be able to see the beauty around you or, 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 or the, uh, the um, wishes around you. And then you need to have that imagination, which is again, originally yours uh, in order uh, to uh, think creat creatively and write. 
So the first element I would talk about is imagination. Now, uh, now uh, when I talk about imagination, I would like to give you a short example. Uh, this is from uh, Andrew Marvel's poem, I think, to his coy mistress. So what he writes is, but at my back, I always hear time's winged chariot. Till the time I read Andrew Marvel, I uh, did not have the imagination in me to compare time to a winged chariot. See how beautifully he blends two ideas. One is a winged chariot and he talks about time as a winged chariot. So that is his imagination. That is what a, a, a poet or an artist does, whether it is uh, with colors and paints or with, uh, with, with um, clay or with pen and paper, we are always uh, trying to say things differently because uh, everything has already been said. If you read literature from the past till now, everything, all the emotions that we feel as human beings have already been discussed, already been written about, already been talked about. You talk of love, you talk of hatred, you talk of jealousy, you talk of the seamier side of nature, your side of nature's beauty, you talk of nature's beauty. Everything has already been written about and talked about. So what is it that you will talk about now? As, as, as Shirley was uh, telling uh, uh, a few uh, minutes ago that there are so many untold stories. What are those untold stories? Those stories are your stories. The stories that are lying hidden inside you and only you with your own uh, unique imagination, with your own peculiar imagination can set them free and uh, free and uh, jot it down on paper. So. Uh, so uh, yes, you need to have imagination. Try to try to think of anything in a different manner. Uh, a, a rose is beautiful. We all know that a rose is beautiful. It smells great. Uh, but uh, it has been said. It has already been said that a rose is beautiful. It smells great. So try to say it in a different way. Try to see it in a different way. Look inside of yourself. The imagination will be there. It's it's, it's definitely there. We all have that kind of imagination in us. And don't 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 worry about whether my imagination is up to the mark or not. Not every one of us can be Shakespeare. Not every one of us can be. Uh, uh, can be someone else. We are we, and our imagination is different from others, and that is where the beauty of creation lies. That is that that is that is what we need in this world. We need different stories, and those stories are the ones which you have within you, the imagination that you carry within you. Now, uh, there's another example that I'd like to give you from the same poem, Andrew Marvels. Youthful hue sits on your skin like morning dew. So just think the beauty of this comparison, you know, the, the, the taut and beautiful skin of a young woman has been compared uh, to uh, dew drops uh, uh, on a leaf. Uh, so uh, so uh, just think of these two things and then you'll understand what the poet is trying to do here and what you are supposed to do with your own imagination. So I think looking inward and trying to imagine things differently would be the first uh, step. So there are so many other uh, uh, poets who have spoken of uh, love, uh, but if you make a comparison between W.B. Yeats and E.E. E. Cummings or someone else, you will find that they have uh, their own way of writing things. Uh, they have their own way of doing things, and you cannot say that Yeats is better than Cummings or Cummings is better than Yeats. You cannot say that. They have their own readers. They have their own uh, set of uh, followers, and, 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 and the beauty is that uh, their uh, imagination appeals uh, to all of us in different ways. And we understand that both of them are talking of love, but talking differently. So it's like that for every other imagination, every other emotion. So, uh, so yes, uh, uh, first uh, step would be imagination. Let's try to cultivate that in us. And the second uh, skill, uh, if we uh, talk about, is language. Now that we have taken care of imagination, we know that, okay, fine, I have, a, I have a very fertile imagination. My imagination flows well. How do I put that imagination into words? How do I put that in, as, uh, in, 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 a, in a beautiful uh, manner, in a simple manner, so that the person who is reading me uh, not only understands my emotions, but also gets interested to uh, read more of me? Uh, somewhere, uh, my writing has to touch a with the readers. They have to feel the jewels. They have to feel that connect with me. It's only then uh, that uh, they will uh, 
greed me. So, uh, so the first skill is imagination, and the second skill is uh, language. So, when it comes to language, uh, the 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 first thing that we can do is uh, we need to read us uh, read ourselves. Reading is the best way how we improve language, and. Uh, it is better if it is started earlier. The earlier we start, uh, the better. So uh, as Professor Zinn was also saying, and I would also add to that, uh, we should make uh, it a habit for young children to, uh, to read uh, instead of uh, making them uh, spend more time with their gadgets. I think it's important to have books in the house and uh, children learn by observing. So if uh, I'm reading a book, my children will automatically be uh, interested in uh, picking up a book and reading along with me. So I think it starts early, but it's, 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 it's never late. It's never late. We can always start reading. And uh, the more you read good literature, the more your language improves. Uh, and, uh, uh, and yes, uh, the, that is that that is where uh, we can improve uh, imagination and language go hand in hand so this is uh, the basic skill that i would like to talk about i'll stop at this for now and uh, the second point that i am up uh, is uh, yeah types 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 of writing yes there are different uh, different kinds of creative writing. Creative writing is not something which can be circumscribed inside one genre. Uh, there are there are there are poems, and there are various types of poems. There are sonnets, there are lyrics, there are eulogies, there are haikus, there are free verse. Uh, you name it, and you have it. Then there are short stories. Within the short story also, we have different uh, varieties. Then we have the, the fiction, novels, novella. Within the fiction also, we have so many genres like historical fiction or uh, a memoir. Uh, so, so, many, uh, so many types of creative writings are there. What I feel is that uh, we don't, uh, at least th this is my, uh, this is a very personal observation that I'm making here. I may be wrong, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to be circumscribed within any kind of genre. If I'm writing a fiction, I don't want to be just writing a fiction in the given format. Uh, I, I, I may want to add a poem there. I may want to uh, talk about a little bit of uh, some other things there. So you can always mix and match. Uh, but yes, uh, you need to have an understanding of what, what types of creative writings are there. Yes. Uh, so we have spoken about uh, basic skill requirements and we have spoken about the different kinds of creative writing. Uh, there's one thing here which I would like to say, if someone is a beginner here, uh, I, would, I, would, I would suggest them, uh, if they're trying to write a poem, I would suggest them to stick to free verse because I think it's one of the easiest ones where we don't need to uh, worry about the rhyming scheme or the sentence structure or the number of words required. Uh, so free verse would be, I think, most advisable for beginners. Uh, but of course, yes, there are people who, from the very beginning, they start writing different kinds of uh, they uh, experiment with different techniques, uh, but that is one suggestion coming from me. And uh, the third uh, point that I'm supposed to take up today is steps in creative writing. Uh, yes, there are numerous steps which we can follow. If you are blessed with a great imagination and uh, if you have a great uh, command over the language, uh, then I think uh, half your battle is uh, done. Uh, I think almost uh, the entire of the battle is done if you have these two things. If anyone has uh, the combination of these two, uh, it would already be a great uh, start. But yes, for, for, for some of us uh, who may not be so blessed, uh, I would like to say a few things, but then suddenly I'm reminded of what Somerset uh, mom had said, that there are three steps to writing a fiction, and uh, unfortunately no one knows that. So, uh, so some people are naturally gifted, some of us are not, but as I said earlier, writing is a skill which can be developed and as professor zin also said that yes there are various steps through which we can develop our writing and the first one that i would like to say is that read read as much as you can when you read <coughs> excuse me when you read you give yourself 
you arm yourselves with words, with vocabulary, with expressions, which are unique to uh, literature, because literature is very different from academic writing. Literature is very different from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, journalism, literature is a different genre altogether, and we need to be aware of where we stand. So uh, the homework first is to read as much as possible. Well, some uh, sometimes in my workshop, I have encountered a few questions where uh, participants say that uh, when we read, we are uh, we uh, are afraid of plagiarizing the same thought. Uh, so what I have. Uh, what I have realized is that reading should be do done first and then after a gap I think you can start writing. That way uh, the thought that you may plagiarize something which you have written unconsciously, plagiarism something sometimes happens very unconsciously, we don't even realize that we are doing it because when you read something you are naturally inspired by that idea and uh, you may uh, uh, veer towards uh, that. Uh, so um, some of them have, of course, asked this question. So I always tell them that, yes, read. And then after a gap of uh, some time, maybe you can start writing. And uh, you have to cross check. Yes, you have to be sure that you're not plagiarizing on an idea because it has become a big thing nowadays. So yes, the first thing is read. Now let's come to the writing part. Zero in on an idea. Think of what you want to talk about. Think of your area, something which you are passionate about. Like, for instance, I cannot go and do a political write-up. That is simply not there in my uh, in my mental makeup. I, I, I think I cannot do it. And even if I have to write about something political, I think I'll do it like a story. I'll do it like a story where, you know, there will be so many emotional words and uh, all, all this stuff, but I cannot write a hard hitting political write-up. That is beyond me. So I have to understand my limits. I have to know what I'm good at and I have to also know what is beyond me. So the first thing is that we need to zero in on an idea. We need to have a content in our mind. What am I going to talk Talk about what am I going to write about so that is the next step uh, once you read you zero in on an idea think about it if required research on it uh, read uh, some others who have uh, uh, spoken on this uh, and then uh, be safe uh, in, in the sense that you cannot directly uh, take someone else's idea if it, if it has already been done. Uh, so you need to also find out and then uh, you move ahead with that. If the content is such uh, where your imagination flows freely and where you have all the required words, and uh, you can you can you can you can simply start writing if, if if some of us are gifted, but some of us may not be that gifted. So we may have a content in our mind. For example, I I might want to write about my college. I might want to write a poem about my college. So what would I do? I have the content in my mind. I know what I want to write about, but I do not have the required words. So what I would do it, I, I, I would think of the required paraphernalia, I would think of the required vocabulary that goes with, with college. I would talk about, uh, I would jot down the word friends, then coffee, uh, then cafes, then teachers. So, so required, uh, the associated words with that word, uh, with the word college, I would bring in my uh, writing i would jot down those words and try to frame sentences depending on what i'm writing if i'm writing a poem i would like i would uh, structure them a little differently but I, if i'm writing a piece of prose then i would of course write long sentences so first i would bring in the vocabulary uh, zero in on the content and then bring in the vocabulary and then try to write the sentences that would be the third stage um Yes, uh, and uh, now comes the time when uh, you are in the process of writing and uh, you want you want to, we are not talking anything new as I already said, that already has already been said. 
But then the way we say it, the way I say it will be different from the way you say it. Uh, so every one of us have our own uniqueness, our own uh, way of saying things. And that is the flavor that we want to bring in our writing. So so in order to make our write up more interesting, very personal and, and, and different from others, what we would like to do is that we would uh, write the sentences in different combinations and permutations. We would use different ways of writing the same thing. So uh, in, in, instead of saying that uh, maybe the, 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 the boy looked very happy, uh, the small boy looked very happy. Maybe we could use a sentence like uh, the young boy's face uh, glowed, uh, glowed, uh, and his face uh, shone like a shone like a radiance uh, sunshine. Maybe something like that. Yes, we could do that. I mean, just uh, try to appeal uh, appeal to the senses of the of, of the readers. We we find a instant connection with writers who try to appeal uh, to our senses. So just writing stock naked sentences like "Okay, the boy was happy." Maybe we could try to somewhere you know uh, try and capture the readers' imagination by using some. Uh, images, some metaphors, some comparisons between nature or some other elements. So that not only gives a uniqueness to our own writing, but at the same time, it appeals to others in a way. And then it, uh, it, it captures the readers' imaginations. And that is where I think uh, we start connecting with the uh, readers. So try different uh, combinations and permutations uh, when uh, you write something. Um, Yes, I already said use sensory perceptions. Practice. Practicing is important, uh, uh, but it's easier said uh, than done. I even, even I have to accept that uh, sometimes I don't find time to write at all. But yes, we must try to be as constant as possible because it has already been said time and again that writing needs to be practiced almost every day. It is like exercise. If you stop exercising, then your body starts complaining and then it starts showing. So in the same way, if you do not use your mental faculties, uh, your uh, the cells that are required to write uh, then uh, they may simply stop thinking and uh, you may uh, you may have a, a day when you can no longer write uh, this is what my mentors also uh, told me when i was starting out uh, so yes i think we need to practice we need to be as constant as possible and uh, even if we cannot exactly sit down and write maybe we can uh, think of it um, Maybe that's one of the reasons why I, have, why I have sleepless nights, because if I cannot write, I think. I, I, I keep thinking about it, and uh, uh, a little bit of thinking is, of course, required. So that is a, a way of giving ourselves practice that, OK, this is I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my brain engaged. Uh, so yes, try to be constant if you're trying to write. Uh, give yourselves practice. Uh, once you are done uh, with writing, if you are uh, happy about what uh, happy about the outcome of your <clears throat> write up, keep it folded and uh, revisit it after a few days, uh, maybe four or five days later, revisit it, uh, read it once again, um, and then edit it, because it is often said that you may not. Uh, do a great work in the first draft itself. Not many of us have that uh, caliber in us. We need to revisit. So when you revisit your own writing after a period of say four or five days, then you may uh, find some grammatical errors there, or you may find some sentences which you want to change, some words which you want to change. So it's, it's, it's very important, unless and until you are very, very confident about your craft, I would suggest that you write, keep them uh, folded and then revisit the writing after a period of four to five days and edit it, edit it, uh, read it. And when I talk of reading your own writing, uh, especially uh, poems, I have seen that uh, if you can read aloud, if you can recite the poem, uh, if there is someone who will read, uh, who will listen to what you're reading, that's, that, that's great. If you have a friend or a mentor who will listen to you while you read your poem, that's amazing. But if you, even if you don't have anyone, you can just read your writings to yourself. Uh, what happens when you read aloud is that uh, there's a close connection between the uh, the 
the, the senses. So when you're reading, as your voice reaches your ears, I think there's a different kind of, uh, uh, there's a different kind of uh, uh, vibration there. I don't know. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, the, the connection, uh, it tells us that, okay, something is wrong. Something is not sounding as good as it should have. Uh, so that's where you start realizing that maybe uh, I, I could change this or I could make this better. So there's a close connection uh, when you read it out. So read it, read aloud. If possible, talk to a mentor or your own friends and uh, tell them how about uh, ask for suggestions, ask for feedbacks, uh, and then uh, uh, you could edit edit what you have written. Uh, uh, you edit the grammar, uh, the punctuation, of course, nowadays in poems, especially we do not uh, use, make use much of punctuation, but then some do. And it's all right, it's, it's, it's totally all right if you want to use punctuation or you don't want to re uh, use punctuation, it's absolutely fine. Uh, so whatever it is, uh, do edit. Um, and yes, grammar has to be good. If you want to write in any language, you must be sure that you have command over the language. Like I, 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 I am afraid to write in my own mother tongue because I never learned it at school and uh, I do not have the kind of command that is required in order to uh, write in a language. Uh, so uh, we write in English. Uh, and uh, uh, but today, as I talk to you, I, 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 I take you all as, write, uh, as people who write in English. And uh, English is uh, not our first language. It is a second language. Language, we, we, every one of us, we are learning it. Uh, so it's very important that we think of the grammar. We check and recheck it because uh, it doesn't come naturally to us. Uh, so uh, it's all right to make mistakes, uh, but then uh, it's our duty uh, as conscious writers to to uh, check it and 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 correct it uh, if you find if you find any kind of mistakes uh, so yes do edit the grammar uh, do think of the punctuation and uh, uh, the final uh, not the final step of course not the least uh, understanding one's genre is very important not every poet can be a, a prose writer not every prose writer or fiction writer can be a poet some people can be both uh, but it's important to understand what we are trying to do there. It's, it's very important to be honest to yourself, to your own feelings, to your own thoughts. Because <clears throat> what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to talk about our own stories. The, the narratives which are not there in the world are our own personal stories. If I have not spoken about myself, by myself, I'm not talking about my personal life as Sarita, but, uh, the related experiences, uh, the, the the life that I may have seen, the, the the experiences that I may have gathered over the years. So if I do not talk about something which touches me to the core, if I do not bring out the stories that I may have heard of or I may have been uh, touched by, uh, no one else will. And that is where uh, the importance of creative writing comes in. We need different kinds of stories. There is a place for every one of us to, 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 to write and uh, to talk, uh, to be heard. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's not important that every one of us become the next best seller. We don't write with that kind of a mindset. Uh, we don't write in order to uh, you know, uh, become the next buzz. Uh, but yes, we write because we know that there are stories untold. Uh, we know that we need to speak up about certain things that uh, that uh, that is there inside us, and uh, that if we do not tell these stories, no one else will. So uh, yes, I think I have. Uh, if there are any questions coming in, I would be very happy to address because I don't know. I feel like I'm speaking to a. <laughs> to a room uh, as, as if I'm speaking to myself but yes I think I have to uh, I've spoken about basic skill requirements which I said is imagination and language uh, there are different types of creative writing as we all know and I think the steps in creative writing how can we move ahead uh, there are so many other exercises that can be brought into play uh, there are so many things that we can do uh, like if you look at a picture and then uh, you, you could uh, start describing it uh, Writing should be a fun exercise. Writing should be an honest exercise. Writing should be an exercise which you love. 
so uh, when I when I uh, or someone else for that matter sends his or her child to a uh, guitar class, we don't aim at uh, you know producing another Jimi Hendrix. But what what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to give the child the knowledge of uh, what uh, music is all about what good music is all about, the nuances of guitar, playing guitar and all that. If he has it in him, or if she has it in her, then she will definitely take it up from there. She will uh, put in her own uh, uh, imagination at play. And then uh, uh, she will become a skilled player. In the same manner, these kind of workshops, this kind of discussions, we can just, just have a discussion. And uh, uh, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to propel you towards uh, creative writing. It's up to you uh, to take it from here. Uh, it's 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 totally up to you what you what uh, what kind of stories you need to tell what in what way you want to say it because uh, you have to decide your genre you have to decide your words and uh, yes at the end of the day you are you are your own writer and bring out the stories bring them out write create uh, let's hear let's there be more uh, literature in this world let the, let there be more stories in this world, untold stories. Let us hear them. Let us talk about them. Let us discuss them. And uh, I think I'm all, all, already done. Uh, so uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, Binod, if you're around, I would uh, request you to come back to the show. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sarita Sharma, very much for this uh, interesting talk on the basic skills uh, and the uh, basic skills of creative writing, the types of creative writing, and the states of creative writing. So you just mentioned about how imagination plays a vital role in uh, creative writing and how one should uh, use it as a vital tool. Uh, he also mentioned that how reading is an utmost uh, act or utmost ingredient for a creative writer and how a creative writer should be aware about uh, the modes of presentation of one's feelings. So uh, that was a very, very uh, uh, thought awakening a talk on creative writing. So now uh, we will have a small exercise for all the registered uh, viewers that we have here in our page now. So now uh, both of the resource person uh, are asked uh, to give a special uh, instant assignment uh, to the 
registered members. Uh, so I guess like uh, Professor Shirley should also come to the screen. So let me ask the technician uh, to please bring uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Shirley to the screen as well. Okay. Uh, so now I would. Uh, okay. So now I would request uh, both uh, the resource person to uh, kindly address the registered uh, viewers, right? Uh, that we have uh, in front of us right now, uh, and ask them to uh, uh, ask them for an instant assignment. So you can ask them to write a short story or a very uh, short haiku or a very short poetry, uh, and uh, they, they, they will be given time for 10 minutes. And uh, within those 10 minutes, uh, uh, their, their uh, assignment will uh, come up in the comment section. And uh, you can go through the, uh, those uh, assignments and you can make a feedback on those assignments as well. So all to uh, Dr. Sharma and Professor Shirley now. So you can kindly address the viewers and ask them to uh, ask them for an instant assignment right now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank Bina. you very much. Uh, and Dr. Sarita, thank you so and much for you. You. Thank you so uh, much for encouraging us to write to use our applications. So the moment has come. So the moment has come for our our registered listeners. And I want to encourage you to just think about what you are imagining about imagining about what you're going to give up in a minute. Try to write to write in your mind. And in a few few minutes. You can write a short poem, a short paragraph, a few sentences, a few sentences, and please share that's on now. Over to you, Dr. Sarita. Over to you, Dr. Sarita. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the viewers and the participants can go for any of your topic. So over to Dr. Sharma. Uh, yes, thank you, Binod. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, Not if you can just mute your your your. Not if you can just mute your your. Can you mute on your side, Binat? Can you mute on your side, Binat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm getting you, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Binat, you mute your. Mute your. No, not the video. Oh, he has left. I'm so sorry. Uh, I think the technician, uh, uh, Mr. Chewong, could help us in this. I, I uh, please bring Vinod back. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, I and uh, Professor Shirley had a discussion a few days ago, and uh, we have a thought of an opening line, uh, which goes like this: "The winter fires crackled warmly." Right, Professor Shirley. Yes. The winter, yes, the winter fires crackled warmly and I would urge every one of you uh, who has registered or anyone who is interested to write anything that you want to on this. You can, you, you can write, develop this into a short story or an opinion piece or just a write-up or a poem depending on your uh, area of interest. Uh, the opening lines would be the winter fires crackled warmly. Uh, so, yes, we are looking forward to that. In the meanwhile, uh, Chevan, uh, Chevan Bhai, could you bring uh, Binod back so that uh, we could have our host back to the show?
please use the next few minutes to write. And as soon as you have done, um, don't, yeah. Give it all this screen. <laughs> okay, I think there's a bit network error there. Binod, uh, we have already given the topic to the participants. And uh, uh, are there any comments coming up on the Facebook page? If we, you want, if we can have a discussion on those. Yeah. Okay, I'll just confirm it. <laughs> You know, do we have any stories coming through yet? Okay. 
Okay, I cannot see any comments coming up right now. So I would just request the viewers, like if you have any question uh, regarding creative writing or any thing related to the art of writing, uh, you can just place your queries on the comment box there in the live section. So I request the viewers, if you have any question, any queries to our distinguished guests here, to our distinguished resource person, so you can just place your queries there in the comment box. I see a beautiful piece being written by Jamfel Shiyan, and it reads, the winter fires crackle warmly, oozes life and romance in my body, spark by spark it kindle my blood, greasing my thawed bone to dance. That is so beautiful. I guess they might be Thank writing. Thank you for doing that. There is another one, I believe, uh, from Olivia Chiron. The winter fire crackles warmly and my soul was happy because I can feel that the breeze outside. So we nice. have Jampel Chiron. So I guess there's something written out there. So I guess the resource person can go through that and you can just you can just read it and you can just comment on it. Okay, this is another one from Oliver Chiron. I can see that um, there's someone called Mandira Gissing. She just wrote the first line. Maybe there's some more lines coming. You'll give it another minute or two. Professor Shirley, would you like to talk about the first uh, entry that has come from Jampel Xian, where uh, uh, the winter fires crackle warmly? Yes, this is the one. Yeah, oozes life and romance in my body, spark by spark, it kindled my blood, greasing my thought bone to dance. So uh, as, a, as a creative writer yourself, how would you like to analyze this, Professor? Thank you so much, Dr. Sarita. I think that the writer, Jim Fell, has taken the winter fires that crackle warmly and he has he has uh, put in a comparison and some metaphors and um and he's he's made some beautiful images out of the fire oozing life and romance and that his body or her body is 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 sparked sparked by it and um that the warmth has thawed the cold to such an extent that it has thawed his bones to dance. 
And there's such beautiful images of life and romance and spark and kindling um, and dancing. Um, and I can just imagine Dr. Sarita, the flames, the different colors of the flames um, of, of yellow, of red, of purple um, and orange and um, the, the spark that all of that gives um, and in his or her imagination they begin to, to begin to ooze life as a result of the warmth generated by the fire and just in a few words something beautiful has emerged in a, just a few moments as well well done to the writer yeah Yes, and the winter has already set in in some parts of India, and I think uh, people are already uh, thinking about bonfires and fire. There's another uh, the entry there from Sushma Tamang Bumzan, and uh, she writes, the winter fires crackled warmly as we sat reminiscing uh, the fun-filled day spent with Dad, but the warmth of the brightly burning fire would not compensate the warmth of a father's love. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, I, I'm, I'm so uh, enriched by these uh, entries, uh, Professor. You know, in a, in a matter of minutes, people are writing like this. So if you really go and edit what they have written here today, and if they go and add some more to it, uh, we, are, we are going to be, uh, you know, enriched with so much of uh, great uh, poems and uh, write-ups and all that. What do you say? I agree, Dr. Sarita. I think this is just so beautiful. Um, you know, reminiscing about the fun days, uh, full days spent with dad, but the warmth of the brightly burning fire would not compensate for the warmth of a father's love. And this is such a beautiful tribute to the father and, and, and such beautiful um, words like warmth and reminiscing and fun. It's, it's, it's uh, the beginning of something really wonderful that can you know, the, the authors can continue to build off just these few sentences in a few minutes. Imagine what you can do over a few days and what you can produce um, just by allowing yourself um, to think freely and let your imagination and creative juices flow. I want to thank all of those who, who tried. Um, and I want to encourage all um, who are still busy with this to continue, um, Dr. Rita, uh, Dr. Sarita, I see another beautiful one here. Maybe you want to want to take that one. Uh, yes, Professor Shirley. It's by Shivam Sharma Karel, and he writes: "The winter fire crackles warmly. The mighty mansion sings songs of rejoice, while the thatched hut." melts its sullen heart. See the comparison here between the mighty mansion and a hatched hut and mm. has a cathartic release of its despair uh, just for a while till the fire illumines the darkness around and sweeps away the cold just for that ecstatic moment till the fire burns. Well, yes, uh, the moment is ecstatic when a fire is burning. And, uh, uh, you know, whenever I look into a fire, mm, there is so much that comes into the mind. Uh, you know, uh, it's like uh, so many images that form, so many ideas that come to the mind. And uh, uh, when uh, this comparison between uh, uh, a rich man's mansion and a small man's hut, I think it is completely it's, it's completely fantastic. Right, Professor? It is truly unique how each person can take can take something and, and make something completely different um, in the same moments um, um, and, 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 and come up with such interesting but unique imagery which they have interpreted as 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 as, as their um, um, unique proposition and how they have played with the concept of the fire crackling. And uh, I see there's another one um, um, from Mandira. She, she's added the rest of it to it. So she says, the winter fires crackled warmly. Silence gathered around the hearth. And within the house, there was no sign of the cold fingers of the wind. 
Um, and that is so beautiful. I just love the image of the cold fingers of the wind. Um, and who would imagine that a wing, uh, the wind can have fingers, but we all feel very, very cold when the cold wind blasts at us. And it's such a beautiful um, metaphor that uh, Mandira has, um, has, 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 has included in her piece that she has submitted. Um, it's, it's absolutely, um, again, a unique production of imagination and creativity. Beautiful. Thank you, Mandira. Uh, yeah, I think, yes, that is what we are talking about earlier in our discussion when we said that, you know, we need to look into ourselves to find that imagination, that play with words that we can so uh, well do if we uh, are, uh, if we are inspired by something, if we, if we are encouraged by something, then these are the kind of uh, images uh, that you know that that come within us and then uh, we can have a variety of uh, Im uh, imaginations springing from just a, a couple of words and within a couple of minutes i am so impressed uh, there's another one the winter fires crackled warmly and the light came into our lives bringing love and compassion now that and is so beautiful uh, you know and the world needs light and the world needs warmth and love and compassion right now i mean we've been through COVID and all of these challenging things and it's coming you know it's not over yet and if we can inspire and uplift each other with such beautiful images and such well put together words and sentences um it's uh it it, it just you know lightens the load of the, the 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 baggage that we carry every day and it releases and unleashes the magic of untold beauty within ourselves and the more i read what people have written here in just a few minutes the more inspired and excited dr sarita i become Yes, same here. And you know, it's always like this with me whenever I am in any workshop. Uh, it's the, the, the learning process that I was talking about earlier is always two way. It's never like we are teaching and they are learning. It's never like that. It's a two way process where both parties are learning. And I take away so much uh, from the workshop as well. I don't know how much I give, but I take so much. And today also, you know, listening to you speak and uh, but, uh, uh, reading all these lines that have come up, you know, in, the, in a manner of minutes, I feel so enriched. I feel so uh, humbled and I feel that there is so much of beauty. There is so much that we need to explore within ourselves. The human mind is complex. The human mind is, uh, you know, undesirable and um, something which uh, hasn't been uh, yet uh, spoken about uh, fully. There's still so much to look within ourselves and write about it. Um, are there any other uh, coming lines? I... Maybe while we wait, Dr. Sarita, I want to say that yeah. we have, as human beings, enormous wells of potential within us and magic and talent. And, and even if we've been marginalized, we probably have more enriching um you know energy to release to the world around um either the beauty of what we see and and what we are saying can influence um, and change the world for the better um and so I, you know i'm so excited by what is possible um and how much potential lies within the human a, a human being that can be unleashed if given just a few moments to do so. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, exercises that, uh, you know, these kind of platforms uh, for uh, beginners to come and share their, their views, uh, uh, to talk about, uh, it, it would have been uh, 
it would have been more fun if we could have, you know, listened to them as well. Uh, so the virtual medium has its own limitations, as I was talking about earlier. If we could have listened to them, if we could have uh, directly had an interaction with them, I think it would have been um, more fun. It would have been more beneficial for every one of us. Uh, so our host has disappeared, surely, once again, we are on our own. <laughs> So uh, 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 um, uh, I think uh, our hosts backstage will help us here because I don't see any other entries coming up. Um, maybe we should wind up or we wait for some more uh, minutes. Uh, please, the hosts backstage will help us, I'm sure. Maybe while we wait, Dr. Sarita, just to say thank you to everybody for participating with us today. And especially thank you to, to you, Dr. Sarita, such a joy, such a joy to work with you. You're thousands of miles away from me, um, but I feel like I'm with you in the same room because in our un uniqueness, we share so much. Um, and and that and that is just the beauty of technology. Um, but yes, it does have its limitations. I would have loved to have heard the authors read their own sentences and speak to it and how it made them feel. I would like to have heard more about that. Um, but we do hope today we have started some magic um, within those who aspire to be writers. Um, and I want to encourage you to not give up. Um, if you're feeling that something's happening with you today um, because you've, you've participated and you've heard what, what is possible, um, don't give up, um, pursue the goal and, um, and you know, um, and get the joy um, that this, this, this brings, that creative writing brings. Thank you. I see Pinot is back. Yes, Pinot is back. I hope uh, we can hear him as well. Professor Shelley, it's you that we need to thank because you came, uh, 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 like you're a very busy person, I know that, but then it's always a pleasure listening to you because, uh, uh, yes, and uh, even though uh, we have just met on the virtual, I feel so connected to you. And uh, yes, I, I, I was I was looking to buy your book, Swimming Upstreams, but I think so, um, Amazon India has not been available as yet. I have to talk to your publisher. <laughs> yes, we know that the show and I think yes Binod please help us do next Okay, so we just had an interesting creative writing session from uh, Professor Shirley Zinn and Dr. Sarita Sharma. So the team Public Nama will come up with more such uh, online workshops in coming days. So thank you everyone for viewing us today and thank you for all the participants uh, who have participated in today's workshop and you will be soon for this creative writing workshop. And with this, I would like to thank you all who have been a part of this uh, creative writing workshop for today's evening. And with this word, I would like to goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>